Thank you, Charlie, for the invitation. Uh, I just realized I've probably explained my title too, too grand. Also, I'll probably will be dis disappointed a little bit. Uh, my, my interaction with the fashion and the travel is very, very limited. You probably find a few cover slides was that most of my slides are AI and also the AI approach. So, probably open a window to you guys to see how AI can do what AI is and also why AI. So, so that's my intention. I might overrun a little bit. Um, I just realized I got nearly 50 slides. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to run quickly. Uh, here's my name. So, I've got quite a few hats, but very little power. So, a lot of work. So I'm going to probably just flash through a lot of things. Uh, but, but I do have to mention my uh, the roads in the faculty, so quite a few slides on that as well. So this is the uh, outline um, in this uh, 15 minutes. So I think AI is being a kind of a trendy word, so it's controversial. So probably here I use this option to give you kind of my understanding, uh, my um, interpretation of AI. And also, it's up to you how you make good use of AI. And now we probably touch on the faculties AI capability, and, and then followed by some highlights, which I did uh, a couple weeks back to a showcase. And then, um, yeah, um, even I think Charlie twist the this mark we do a fashion. My interaction with fashion was very, very limited. Uh, it was quite interesting. So why AI? I think uh, I mentioned it's, uh, almost everywhere today. So in the sense, you can't avoid it. If you can't avoid it, why not take it and understand why AI is? So this is kind of things I summarized. It's almost everywhere. Uh, it's, as we just see the progress in the last ten years in particular, and and uh, in, in many one from engineering uh, backgrounds, so trained by engineers, conventional message from is it inefficient or speed? So I have to find a new way. And also come to this kind of AI approach can deliver more efficient, sustainable solutions. So the hard is some engineering problems. I mentioned AI is everywhere in other uh, other money. So if you pay attention to it, and also many people don't really read this quote was uh, interview during uh, the BBC. Now, we'll see what is coming. Of course, recently, the uh, Council published a roadmap. I'm not sure how many people have read this. It really started. It's a strong warning. Skill shortage, uh, AI will be uh, embedded into people's life, all in the people's life. And then, the uh, recent Council uh, this year, earlier this year, published a review. Uh, a, a conversation with uh, um, um, risk council management kind of reviewed 80% um, research proposals now can contain some elements of AI. So what is AI? So this is, uh, I think, what I'm going to uh, um, fast forward a little bit. So yeah, this is uh, kind of taken from my uh, teaching tutorials. Uh, AI has been mysterical, sometimes controversial terms. Um, but I like to use Steve Pinker's uh, quote uh, to dash out any fear of AI. And also, of course, um, um, the ex CEO of IBM said really nicely AI is not about um, 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 anything scary, it's actually stuff to augment our own intelligence. This is really, really nice. Of course, AI is, is kind of measured by capability. So it's, as long as you have mechanism you can sense and reason, all these things you can call it by AI. Putting the AI in the context, many people uh, heard of AI, ML, machine learning, data science, or neural networks. How are they related? This is really my style graph I summarize. So broadly we can call this AI anything that can mimic human intelligence, AI, is conventional data step by step. And then uh, conventionally, uh, AI is, is a bunch of statistical techniques, methods to do kind of pattern recognition, clustering, for example. That's traditional machine learning, the subset of so called AI. And then now moving to, I mentioned in the last 10 years, 
we really make the progress in the sense everything moves away towards deep learning. So deep learning is a sub subset of the entire uh, AI domain, but uses so-called multi-layer neural networks. This kind of revolutionized how we approach this kind of pattern recognition uh, in Kevin's problems. In terms of data science, data science just borrow the techniques developed from these areas to do number crunching. In many, in many sense, all our problems in engineering or any other sector of sciences, problems elevate to data level. So we only, from data science point of view, machine learning point of view, we only find or develop a method which can deal with data level um, problems, regardless. Um, as digital. For example, we do some defense projects, we don't really need to touch on their problems or their data because classified information, but we solve on data level. This is really, really nice. This is why AI and data can benefit all sectors. Um, people often think AI is very, very messy, but it is. If you really want to do research in AI and not just apply AI, it's really, really massive that for me. If you haven't done this, uh, yeah, you, you probably can't fly, uh, but you can't do much research on it. The good things about uh, my interpretation is AI's um, favorite, AI approach favors approximation rather than exact mathematical um, uh, theories. So. And also, our grandmasters also come down. This is, of course, this is our. Um, Focus on uncertainty, but also applies to AI as well. In a sense, AI are taking an approximation approach to science engineering. So if you have had any mechanical modeling background, CFD, you understand the finite elements, really good, good example to approximate or differential equations. Those are the basic differential equations or mathematical theory do not apply to AI. So AI are really taking this up use this uh, to benefit uh, all science engineers. So, for example, give an example of the manifold. Uh, if you really want to understand the manifold, this is a really abstract mathematical concept you, you need to understand the of things. This is uh, translated from the uh, German manifold best part. And then you, you, if you really want to get understand, you need to understand all these terminologies. And uh, probably, if you just read this uh, introduction book, this book, each page contains 10 equations, and it's only to get you into this. But doing machine learning, doing AI, you don't really need to understand all this, but to make good use of the uh, concepts. So, back to this uh, um, summary, I would just like to point out um, AI is taking inspiration from neuroscience. For example, I had a couple of neuroscience groups, really, really. Fascinating, you understand how neuron works, how intelligence is coming from. But worth noting, it doesn't really need clarification from neuroscience. Just give an example when humans start learning how to fly, to look at birds, and try to invent something birds, uh, birds have, but we end up airplane, which is not really a bird. So, similar to this, so for artificial intelligence, Taking expression from human intelligence, power intelligence, but may not end up in exact class like uh, neural networks. Yeah, just skip this. Uh, I think you do, um, even through AI, you do need to have a good mathematical background, for example, differential equations. Uh, in optimization, the only thing you need to do with AI is this stochastic gradient descent. You see, even this is not it's a, it's a approximation. You can, you can see the point. Even, for example, in entire optimization, you need, you need to do a huge um, uh, integration. But in machine learning, just take the understanding students. That's it. Or if I put any plain word differences, as long as you can differentiate between things, you can do machine learning. And this is really, I think, in my opinion, uh, David Ma made a huge contribution in, in computational AI. It's, because his work, and people realize, so-called intelligence is actually a computer. So that's why we, we use computers to do machine learning to do AI. So those came from uh, David Mars' early work. 
and also a lot of the programs actually made in vision, in perception. So, for example, deep neural networks all start in this um, vision, so vision tasks. My team has uh, quite a few vision related projects, not just computer vision for industry, also uh, with, uh, with our hospitals. So, I'm going to skip this, just give you a high, I mean, what, why this kind of manifold makes sense. In a sense, without this, you can't, you can't put that in machine learning terms. You can't really compare objects. Remember, you want to do AI, you need to see the differences between objects. If you can see the difference, you can do AI. But in the hard language space, in the abstract data space, you can't really see the difference. While manifold, put your feet on the ground, you can see the differences. So to put this uh, in, a, in a more complicated way, for example, if I do my core research area is image processing vision. For this, for example, face onto this manifold, you can compare differences between this people, that people, that post, that post, that light is not light here, for example. Uh, this is also linked to our brain works, so called um, cortex. So I'm going to skip this because there's too many slides. Uh, just, just jump onto this slide. This is a few the work we did a few years back. Um, we construct manifold, not just not from real human, uh, real human uh, head, uh, uh, headshots, from models. So this manifold can learn. You can you can learn from head models. This this blended blended generated models. So blended is uh, in three D software. You can generate arbitrary 3D really head models. And from this you can render millions of images. You can, you can learn this manifold from these rendered artificial models on what you can do. And you can apply to real, real people. And to see how they change, for example, different pose, different lighting, different expressions. So this kind of highlights how AI approach to design to Cope with variations. And also, if you're into uh, deep learning, so called auto encoder, it's nothing but uh, if you, you are from an engineering background, you must have heard of PCA. PCA is kind of linear mapping, and you will have to just convert it to non linear mapping. So it's not hugely different. So I'm not going to um, spend too much time on this. It's, uh, we work on various expressions, visual expressions, based on similar principles and the captures. Captures is fascinating in the sense we, we deliberately distorted uh, um, facial features, but we, we can still effortlessly recognize these, these people. So I'm going to skip this just too many. Okay, jump onto the, uh, my uh, um, package roles as a uh, uh, um, AR kind of uh, champion. Um, so here I summarize um, FSE, Faculty of Science and Engineering. The AI and data science kind of capabilities. Uh, first one is core machine learning and deep learning. And second one is um, uh, natural, language pro natural language processing. We have National Text Mining Center, so you might have come across. I don't have a big series on your as well. We have uh, recently launched the uh, event so next week, is next? So a launch of uh, Center for Robotics and AI. Unfortunately, I can't attend that because of conference. And also, we have a, a strong activities in, in, in research into new applications, the computer applications. Fortunately enough, we still have one of the uh, ARM founders working with us on this uh, topic. And the vision systems, I mentioned a lot of uh, demand on using vision means to do inventory inspections. Exponentially, and the smart sensing, uh, possibly for for the uh, um, textile industry as well, and telecommunications. So, so just just a few slides on some some kind of um, progress or highlights. You, you may get some kind of uh, idea how the AR approach is. If you are familiar with uh, CFD, this is CFD is kind of uh, simulate the turbulence in the wind tunnel, for example. So in a sense, you don't really need to, 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 to put all the design into the wind tunnel to do the experiment. You can simulate. Yeah. And 
and we, we went a step further. We not just simulate, we also control. In CFD, for example, we design a, a, a track or an airplane. You want to drive as low as possible. You want the turbulence as smooth as possible. So not just for design. The benefit of digital design you can cut off millions versions and then find best version. And we can also put active control to see the effect. This is all design. Of course, when you come to some stage, you can then you can design your vehicle for that in your intelligence. This is another area I think AI is making a huge impact, materials and component design. I'm not sure whether this will apply to textile, maybe. I just give a wild example I've been involved with. Um, this is a power industry, so um, especially with electric powers uh, and other guys. But electric industry is a big trouble in the sense insulation gas, SF6. I'm not sure how many people have heard this gas. This is a really nice gas in terms of uh, electrical properties, uh, um, any other stability problems and um, properties, but they are very, very harmful to the global warming. In fact, they are 25,000 times worse than CO2. So the industry will be banned this gas, uh, but they have not found alternatives yet. So we are using machine learning, in this case multi-optimization, to find the mixtures of natural gases. So if you look at tertiary mixtures, you're looking at 10 to 19 possibilities. So impossible to do manually. So we have to use machine learning to find it. So at the moment we just made some progress. Um, for example, op optimizing global warming tensions and then high highest boiling point. Uh, electrical properties and then narrow down to very few and uh, then this is funded by natural uh, sorry uh, natural grid. Now we've got a small grant to test out. So once we narrow to a small number and we can test. So this is a kind of uh, mirrored in kind of design, material design uh, uh, involved in another project I don't have time to mention in the sense you don't have to physically Make these materials and can, you can simulate the behaviors of properties before you narrow down to a few candidates to test them. Uh, vision inspections, this is a really challenging policy. I hope you can see this. This works for us uh, with the uh, um, recycling industry, detecting um, batteries is the uh, uh, The vision systems, with the, with the TPS stations, uh, this is uh, Really, really um, challenging environment to communicate and also distort the audience. Another sensing kind of related machine learning is uh, agriculture. We have a, uh, a ongoing progress with the uh, US and Africa to detect the, uh, the, the virus. And this is, a, I'm not going to mention too much. So, this is really, I think, one of the African main fruit, uh, but they have. The virus, which can only show symptoms after many, many days, this is 80 some days. So we want to detect as early as possible, otherwise the crop will be ruined. So we, we, we recently published a paper after two years work on the major scientific report. We can use multi spectral and machine learning to detect as early as 14 days. Similarly, if you do PCR tests on the, on the viral infection on the plants, Looking at 80 to 8 days, 80 to 8 days, and not 100% detectable because you need to build up RNAs. So, this is uh, we are applying for a big grant to roll out in Africa. So, this is small devices. Um, digital twins is another strong theme uh, under the AI and the, and the robotics. Uh, this is the work we do. We have been doing with the UK AEA, uh, UK Energy, uh, Company Energy Agency. Uh, if you've been to Colony Science Centre, you might remember this. Yeah? Uh, otherwise, this is almost impossible to send people in to, to repair um, stuff or uh, to uh, inspect everything. So we, we build <coughs> the trees so we can 
not just primary. So big three is not just uh, virtual reality, rendered digital games, but also you can do simulations. And you can also plan the work. Okay, um, I promise I have a couple slides on um, fashion, so this is it. This is, so, so very quickly, so I had a fairly interesting uh, project with a uh, uh, leading retailer. I'm not going to mention this, uh, this um, company's name, so Manchester Base. Uh, they had a um, uh, problem in putting the uh, garments onto models. They, 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 they insist in taking every single shot, every single dress. But they have 12 boots. Uh, doing running almost 20 miles a day, but they still, they still couldn't meet it in lunch. So what they wanted to do is to see whether you could, we could superimpose a dress on the mannequin to a model. So this is quite a, uh, so we, we did this as an innovation for this. Uh, came out quite nicely, so if you just have a quick glance, it's almost very natural. Of course, it's a, probably a little bit uh, post processing to cut up to make it more smooth. Otherwise, in general, it's fairly, fairly natural. For example, this new one. So, this is the, uh, this is the interaction with the fashion industry two or three years back. By the way, even early, I'm not sure whether this will apply for you. Uh, it's a variable sensing, variable techniques. But this is the uh, uh, also matches the base and start up uh, for smart life. I'm not sure whether they still need this. Uh, that time they, they used garments to have a census, the, the variable census meeting room. Uh, so you can sense the ECT signals, for example. Their first first set of uh, products is uh, sportswear, no problem. So it's because sportswear is close to your skin, you can pick up the signals. But we want to uh, expand to healthcare. So that we have a problem. So what we need is uh, is uh, use, uh, deep learning to be noise to the signals. This is signal, physical signal picked up from the, the senses. And this is a process of senses. So you can reliably pick up your ECT signals uh, to monitor your uh, well-being. So this is a two very short encounter with the fashion industry. Uh, just a flash of my teams, uh, not just updated and appreciation. Okay, that's all here. Thank you, Jim. Does anybody have any? <laughs> any questions, anybody? Uh, I, have a, I have a question uh, about your recycling project. Uh, do you see any demand from the industry for? Uh,